Now it's time to talk about another kind of stereoisomer or other kind, actually, uh, that we're going to be talking about. They're called optical isomers. And these are specifically for chiral compounds. And any molecule with a non-superimposable mirror image is said to be chiral. And chiral, by the way, is the Greek word for hand. And hands are chiral, meaning that they are non-superimposable mirror images, that if I try and take and overlay one hand on another, like they are not the same, their fronts and their backs are different, they are different. And as far as we're concerned, any ca any carbon, oops, get back there, um, any carbon with four different substituents or four different things attached to it will be a chiral center. And we will be very focused on identifying chiral centers. And it's easy to see in these molecules right here because you have four different colored things, atoms, if you will, uh, there. And let's see, there we go, slide that up. Um, and what it's showing down here at the bottom is that the mirror image and itself are non-superimposable. And uh, I'm going to uh, stop sharing for a second. And go to me. So that you can see two molecules. And these two molecules are, let's make sure, let's line them up. And actually, you'll see why, but we'll put the white hydrogen atoms in the back. These are mirror images of each other. You can see that the yellow ones are closer, the blue ones are farther, and so they are mirror images of each other. And uh, most molecules' mirror images are superimposable, but not these ones, because if I turn them around and try and make the green and the green at the top and the white and the white in the back, you can see that the blue and the yellow are not the same. This, these are actually different molecules. They have the same atoms, the same bonding pattern, but different spatial arrangements of atoms. That's why they are um, uh, stereo, uh, stereoisomers. And in fact, they are optical isomers because of the way in which they interact with light. Um, let's go back to sharing contents. And these two molecules, by the way, are uh, slightly different than the pictured ones there. So uh, in the systems that I'm used to, although every uh, kind of modeling kit seems to be different, so white is always hydrogen though, black is always carbon in everyone I've ever seen, green is always chlorine, and in this one, or well, what I'm calling them anyway, yellow is going to be uh, fluorine and blue is going to be bromine. So this is going to be, let's see, so holding this up, I've got carbon in the middle, I've got chlorine on top, I've got hydrogen in the back, and sticking, well, depending upon how this shows up, sticking towards you is going to be the fluorine, and sticking away from you is going to be the bromine. And then the other one is going to be carbon, Chlorine sticking up, that's the green. Hydrogen sticking back. Chlorine sticking out at you, and bromine sticking away from you. I can back down there. You can see that the bromine's behind. So we have an imagined mirror in between them, and you can see they are mirror images. They are non-superimposable as well. And that's how you do them with the modeling kits. Um, another word for this type of stereoisomer is enantiomers. And this time we've got actually the two molecules with some different color arrangements here. And they are non-superimposable. That's what they mean. And 
it's easy to tell uh, how these are, how when you have enantiomers, when you have chiral compounds, because you look for a carbon that has four different things attached. And uh, another key thing about enantiomers is that all of their physical properties are exactly the same, meaning their densities, their melting points, their boiling points, um, their heats of fusion. So uh, all of those properties that we used to talk about in first semester general chemistry when we were talking about intermolecular forces, heats of fusion, heats of uh, vaporization, they're all the same except how they interact with light. And we'll talk about that more after we do a couple of examples and some more stuff just about identifying chiral centers. This is ibuprofen. Uh, and interestingly, ibuprofen is uh, sold as both of these uh, enantiomers, both of these chiral compounds sold together. And that's actually called a racemic mixture. is when you have both enantiomers or both chiral compounds, 50%, 50%. And um, what we're here to do is we're here to find the chiral center. So find chiral center, because that's definitely something you're going to have to do on the homework. So uh, in order to find a chiral center, you want to find a carbon that has four different things attached to it. Oftentimes, there are hints, though, like this out wedge. It's a huge hint because it's helping to tell you the shape around that. And uh, let's see. Let's erase that, though. And now, uh, if we look at what we've got here, and we zoom in on this carbon, We've got a carbon over here. We've got a whole bunch of stuff. We've got a different set of stuff over here. And not shown, because we were only showing three bonds right now, is an H as well. So there are four different things. And we want to make sure you know what four different things are. So this direction goes to a carbon that is part of a ring. This direction goes to a carbon with a COOH group, a, a weak acid, also called a uh, carboxylic acid, and an organic acid as well. Even though, and this is a CH3 group because there are three hydrogens attached to it. All three of those carbons are different because they have different extensions beyond them. So uh, what we can compare that to is, for example, uh, let's start with a simple one. This carbon. This carbon has, it's a CH3 group. It has three hydrogens attached to it, not chiral at all. Now let's talk about this carbon here. This carbon here has uh, one carbon, it has one carbon, it has uh, an H attached to it because it has three bonds and the fourth one must be to an H. And then it has one, two, et cetera, et cetera. So this carbon is not chiral because it has two CH3 groups, which are the same and not different. Remember, to be a chiral carbon, you have to have four to different things, different in some way. And then we can come over here to any one of these carbons, but let's talk about that carbon right there. That carbon right there uh, has only three things attached to it. It has a carbon-carbon double bond, has a carbon-carbon single bond, and then it has 
all of this stuff, which are three different things, but it does not have four different things. So these carbons are not chiral. And if you look at all the other carbons, you will see that there's only one chiral center, one chiral carbon in this molecule. That's enough to make it a chiral molecule. And, um, and we've identified the chiral center. That is that carbon right there and that carbon right there. Uh, same carbon is going to be chiral in each of the enantiomers in each of the non-superimposable mirror images. And showing that these two molecules are much bigger are non-superimposable mirror images. It's the same kind of thing when you've got four different things attached, those four different things make them non-superimposable mirror images. Thalidomide. Thalidomide is a chemical where one of the enantiomers, actually this one, and I'm going to go back to black here, um, is, let's see, Right. Uh, this is going to be an antimere that was used to treat nausea in pregnant women. And what they did is they actually sold only this enantiomer when they gave it to you because the other enantiomer um, leads to birth defects. I don't know whether they knew this at the time, um, but they only sold it as the one on the left. But what happened was people would take just the one on the left and inside the body, it would actually transform into the one on the right. And there was a big deal about thalidomid and leading to birth defects in babies when it was just meant to, to treat nausea for women. And that was a terrible case. Um, but what we're here to do today is find the chiral center. Again, our chiral center is going to be helped by the fact that we've got some out and back wedges around it. And sure enough, it is this center right here. Um, and that makes these uh, enantiomers, that makes these chiral compounds with a chiral center. And if you were to go through each of the other ones, you would see that each of the other ones uh, is only bonded to three things, or in a case of this one, it has two things, two hydrogens that are bonded to it. And so uh, if it's got four things, but two of them are the same, still not chiral.